Hello, this is David Abonic Turtle with an illustration of the log normal value at risk or log normal var. The reason I like the log normal var exercise is that we get to apply some basic building blocks from quantitative finance. So as usual, I need some assumptions about the asset. I'm going to assume the asset is a stock and that the price today is $20. So that's S0, where the zero indicates time zero or today. Then an annual rate of return of 8%. And then a volatility of 30%, so that's annualized volatility. And then a time horizon of three years. The rate of return here is also sometimes called the drift. So now that I have the assumptions about the asset, the first tricky idea here is the log normal property of stock prices. What do we mean by that? Well, we mean if we take the stock price next period divided by this period, take that fraction, or ratio, and then if we take the natural log of that, we're computing a continuously compounded return. Or what we could call here a log return, or if you like, a period log return. And the log normal property is the assumption, we know it's not realistic, but it's tractable for modeling purposes. The log normal property is the idea that this log return is approximately normally distributed. Notice that's about the return. If the return is approximately normal, then the future price level, so that's the price level right here in the numerator, that is log normally distributed. And in fact, what I've plotted here is the distribution here of this future stock price, this numerator, three years in the future. And it's log normal per the log normal property. The thing about the log normal is, unlike the normal, it's got this positive skew. So that leads to the next difficult idea, oftentimes a source of confusion, the fact that we have both a future median and a future mean that's greater than the median. So the mean is the easier one. If we want to ask ourselves, what's the future expected stock price in terms of the mean in three years, we can just continuously compound today's stock price at the drift over three years. And in fact, that's what I've got right here. $20 continuously compounded at 8% over three years gets us to 2542, and that's plotted right about here on the distribution. That's the mean of this log normal. Now, the because we have skew, the more difficult one or is the median, and it's gonna be necessarily be less than the mean and it's similar. The only thing we add is this subtraction of one half the variance. And what I like to say there is that volatility erodes returns. So now our drift has this subtraction factor and I've got that calculation right here. This stock continuously compound. And you can see here we're subtracting sigma or the volatility squared, which is the variance, but half. And that gets us the median. This spreadsheet, by the way, will be uh, all upload to the blog if you'd like to take a look at it. So three years forward, the median is 2221. Now let's ask, what is a confidence interval around that future stock price? Well, I need a confidence level. I'm going to assume 95%. And the 95% confidence is going to correspond to two different deviates, depending on whether it's two-tailed, so a two-tailed significance test, or two-tailed 5% significance or 95% confidence corresponds to 1.96. So that's, uh, I'm using the norm S in function here. So that is the two-tailed deviate under a normal distribution that corresponds to 95% confidence. Then my one-tailed deviate is just a straight norm S in function. And so this is the one I use for value at risk. 95% confidence corresponds under normality to 1.645 deviate. So now first, if I want to ask, what's the 95% confidence interval for the future stock price? Notice here's the formula I can use, or here's the formula just for the lower bound. Notice right here, it's essentially the same as computing the median. That's the blue line here. The only thing for my confidence interval, I'm going to, I'm going to, on the downside or on the lower interval, I'm going to subtract this term. And then what I'm not showing you here, but what's calculated here is the upper interval. So I would take this term and instead of a minus here, I would just have a plus. But so if we look at the lower side, 
here's the formula that corresponds to this. I basically got my median term here, and then I'm subtracting the volatility scaled by the deviate multiplied by the square root of time. And so that's the formula I've got right here. And the thing here about the confidence interval is because the confidence interval is two-tailed, I'm using the two-tailed deviate of 1.96 to corres that corresponds to 95% confidence. So that's this formula here corresponds to this. And now, remember, if I just add a if I replace the minus with a plus, I'm going to get the upper interval right here, and that corresponds to $61.51. So it's a wide interval, but it's a 95% confidence interval. Notice my deviate is a normal deviate as reflected by the norm SVIN function, but that's okay because it's here in the exponent. So by being in the exponent here as part of the E, I'm appropriately treating the normality of the return, which really gets converted back into the log normal distribution. Okay, so that's my 95% confidence interval. Then finally we get to the value at risk question, the 95% value at risk. Now that has to be a one tail. I get this question a lot. Is, can VAR be two tailed? The answer is no. VAR is only concerned with losses on the downside. And it's the same formula here. The only thing is we're making sure, we're being careful to use a deviate that corresponds to one tail at this confidence level. And so, I've got this formula here where I subtract the volatility, the deviate of 1.645 that corresponds to 95% confidence scaled by the square root of time. If I have that formula here, the answer is $9.45, and then I've roughly sketched that right here. So notice what that means here is that 95% of the time we expect the future stock to be in this area. And remember what the VAR says. The way I prefer to state the VAR here with 95% confidence, I prefer to, to emphasize here the tail and say that 95% VAR means 5% of the time we expect the stock to be lower than or worse off than our VAR. But we don't know specifically how much. So if the $9.45 equals our 95% VAR, I can just subtract it from our starting price of $20, and that gives me a loss, we call this an absolute VAR, of $10.55, meaning, starting today at 20, under all of these really sort of unrealistic assumptions about the log normal property of stock prices, 5% of the time, and only 5% of the time, we expect to lose more than $10.55, because that's our absolute value at risk. This is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.